programs can be optimized at the multiple different levels. Using a systems tag from the top, we can optimize programs at algorithm level. An example is quick sort versus bubble sort. So quick sort is much better choice than bubble sort. And below we have a data representation level. So we can choose, we want to choose a better data structure, for example, linked list versus array. And below we can optimize programs at coding level. We have uh, many optimization techniques at coding level, for example, inline the function and loop tiling, loop unrolling, etc. And below we can optimize programs at compiler level. So there are many compiler flags available and we have uh, uh, different compilers. And at the bottom we have a, a, a hardware. So we want to pick a better hardware architecture uh, for specific op the program optimization. So domain specific processes are emerging and we have GPU and we have uh, traditional CPU and other parallel processors. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about compiler. So compiler must not cause any change in program behavior. So compiler doesn't change the quick sort to bubble sort or vice versa. Um, so it does not improve algorithm. Uh, but still compiler apply hundreds of optimizations when it generates the machine code. So compiler plays a very important role in program optimization. Let's talk about several basic the optimizations. The first one is code motion, and the idea is to reduce the frequency of computation. So here's an example. So we have a for loop, and the idea is we just move the, the computation that doesn't change over iteration out of the loop so that we can reduce the uh, dynamic um, the, the com amount of dynamic computation uh, when program runs. So this technique is called uh, code motion, which is to reduce the frequency of computation. Now next one is strength reduction. Um, so idea is to replace the expensive operation with a cheaper one. And this technique is machine dependent because the cost of some operation varies depending on the machine. Here we have an example. Um, so the multiply by 16 can be replaced with the left shift by 4 and on most hardware left uh, shift is much much cheaper than multiplication. So this is basically st strength reduction optimization technique. The next one is uh, share common sub expression. So the idea is to reuse uh, portions of expressions. So we have uh, some example here. Um, so we have up, down, left, right variables, each of which accesses uh, the up and down, left and right elements of two-dimensional array. And um, we have a common sub-expression, which is i times n plus j by taking out um, that i times n plus j, we can reduce the overall computation significantly. So this is to share a common sub-expression. Next optimization is loop unrolling. Um, so we duplicate the loop uh, multiple times or completely. Um, uh, so we have an example here. We have a uh, uh, we add it, we are adding array A and B into C and this for loop runs nine times, right? And uh, we if we unroll with the unroll factor of three, the unroll factor three means replicating the loop body three times. Of course we have to adjust the loop variable increments and uh, the index of arrays. Um, at the end of the day, they do the exact same computation, but the unrolled loop performs much better uh, because 
the number of branch related instructions uh, uh, decreases. So how do you need to execute the smaller number of uh, branch related instructions? And because of that, we have a less control hazard, the instruction pipeline hazard. And um, naturally, it gives a better instruction schedules. Um, so look at this uh, example. So the, the first column is the original loop body uh, in assembly program. And after all, we have a longer body, the replicated body, but we don't need a loop related instructions in between the duplicated body. Um, and also with the larger body, compiler finds a, a better instruction scheduling opportunities. So compiler shuffles the instructions to make it faster. So those are advantages. The disadvantage include increased code size and uh, the, the higher register pressure. So the compiler may need to use a more number of registers to compile the unknown loop body. Um, but the advantages uh, in a, I outweigh the uh, disadvantage significantly. So this is a, a very important code optimization technique. Another one is function inlining, um, which can be done by compiler. In GCC, there's a flag called hyphen F inline. And what it is is, um, so the function call is replaced by the function code itself. Um, so we have an example here. Uh, we have a function F and bunk one function func1 and the function func1 calls the function f uh, four times and if we all know this is a uh, we just simply replace the function call with the function body so we have uh, this inline the function um, calls and with this increase the the code we can you know find the more opportun optimization opportunities like this so the function overhead decreases and also it allows the further optimizations. Function each function call has a lot of overhead, right? We have to put a lot of things into stack memory and it's, there's a control flow hazard by call and return instructions. Um, and with the function inlining, those goes away. Um, let's talk about uh, two useful tools. Uh, the first one is GDB. Uh, GDB is a text-based GNU debugging tool, which is the best friend of GCC. And many GUI debuggers like Eclipse, uh, they use a GDB as a backend. Um, so to use a GDB, we need to compile with the dash lowercase g flag um, so that the compiler generate the debug information. And um, here, here are simple commands. Um, so to load, uh, we use a GDB and we run and uh, we can check the register values and we can put breakpoint and we can step into and we can print the value of uh, some variables. The another useful tool is uh, gprof. So gprof is a text-based GNU profiling tool. And it's useful, so it gives you uh, the execution time of the each functions and you know, code sections, etc. And it's useful to determine uh, the bottleneck of the program. Um, now let's talk about the programming paradigm um, classified based on the underlying memory architecture. So again, the programming paradigm is generally classified based on the underlying memory architecture. And uh, for distributed memory systems, there are multiple virtual memory spaces. So we use uh, message passing protocols um, for communication and synchronization. So uh, the one popular the, the method is the MPI. So message passing interface is a very popular program paradigm for distributed memory system. Um, for shared memory system, like a multi-core, mm -hmm. um, we have a p-thread and open MP. Um, 
So with those, we read and write the shared variables and the threads are synchronized and communicated uh, uh, much easier through uh, the same virtual memory space. And for separate memory system like uh, GPU, so GPU has its own separate memory and we typically copy the data between two, you know, between different separate memory spaces. Uh, so we have a dedicated APIs or language extensions. You know, we have for GPU, we have a CUDA or OpenCL. Now let's talk briefly about MPI, so message passing interface. Uh, so MPI is widely used, a uh, standard, standardized and portable message passing standard. So it defines a syntax and semantics of a core library routines useful to write portable message passing programs in C, C++, and Fortran. Um, and there are several well-tested efficient implementation of MPI. Um, Here's an example. So here's an example of MPI code. Um, so the, the statement highlighted is uh, MPI specific uh, keyword and uh, code. So, you know, so with this, uh, we send the message and receive a message and uh, we can use a multiple computers at the same time. <coughs> the next one is a P thread. Uh, POSIX threads, P thread is very popular. It's a, uh, the P threads are the implementations of threads that adhere to the IEEE POSIX standard. Uh, and P threads are C language programming types defined in the P thread.h header file. Um, so with the P thread, um, the programming paradigm, we create the multiple threads, you know, to execute the multiple tasks uh, uh, simultaneously. So threads. Uh, uh, independent streams of instructions that can be scheduled to run as such by the OS and uh, multi-threaded programs are where the several tasks are able to be scheduled to run simultaneously or independently by the OS. Um, a thread exists within a process and use the process resources um, and threads uh, 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 only duplicate the essential resources, it need to be independently schedulable. Uh, so it's lightweight because the most of the overhead has already been accomplished through the creation of a process. So it's like a thread, a, a children of a process and it's a lightweight uh, ind independent uh, the instruction stream. Here's an example of a uh, P thread code. And uh, so we include the header file pthread.h and uh, the, the red highlighted statements are pthread related statements. And so we define the, the we define the pthread, um, I'm sorry, and we create the threads and we exit the threads. Um, this way we write multi-threaded program uh, where multiple tasks are, are executed simultaneously. Now, the OpenMP uh, is another uh, parallel programming paradigm. It's a directive-based programming style. So OpenMP is an API that supports the shared memory multiprocessing programming in C, C++, and Fortran. Uh, it consists of a set of uh, compiler directives, library routines, and environment variables that influence the runtime behavior. So it's easy, much easier to program than pthread and other uh, parallel programming paradigms. So we include the header file, uh, omp.h, and we use a pragma, sharp pragma omp parallel 4. Then compiler automatically compiles the, co uh, the, the parallelized uh, that specific code. Now, the OpenCL is a framework for writing programs that execute across heterogeneous platforms consisting of CPU, GPU, DSP, and FPGA, and other hardware accelerators. Um, and programs consist of host code and device code. Um, the function at the bottom is the device code. So it's like a 
the function that runs on either GPU or DSP or FPGA, depending on uh, how you specify it. Um, so this is a device code and this is the host code. So we include the header file and uh, we use uh, OpenCS specific APIs. Um, so we, 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 we run the host code and device code um, and we manage them as we want.